Welcome to the history of responsible AI from All Tech is Human. I'm your instructor, Renee Cummings, a data science professor of practice at the University of Virginia's School of Data Science. And I will be guiding you through this course where we will trace how responsible AI matured from early industry principles and seminal books to today's global standards and laws. You'll meet the people, papers, and policies that have defined the field and see how each moment pushed practice forward. Let's begin around 2014, when responsible AI wasn't a department or a budget line. It was a set of concerns and a handful of pioneers trying to turn values into workflow. At IBM, designers and researchers first published Everyday Ethics for AI in 2014. It wasn't a manifesto, it was a how-to. Templates, prompts, and design patterns translated virtues like accountability and fairness into day-to-day -day product choices. That tool quietly normalized something we now take for granted. Governance and user experience belong in the same room. Ethical AI stopped being an essay and started being a checklist, a review, a conversation at the whiteboard. Ideas matter when they change behavior. In 2016, Kathy O'Neill's Weapons of Math Destruction did exactly that. It pulled opaque scoring systems, hiring, education, policing, into the daylight and into the public lexicon. Suddenly, algorithms were not just code, they were policy. In 2017, the World Economic Forum's Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution introduced a new posture, multi-stakeholder rulemaking. Instead of policy happening to industry, governments, companies, and civil society sat down together to co-design guidance. That notion, co-create guardrails, will echo again and again in our story. Inside companies, governance took form. Microsoft's ETA committee made cross-functional review, policy and engineering in the same meeting, the norm. A short while later, after intense internal debate, Google's AI principles set out public commitments, benefit society, avoid unfair bias, be safe, be accountable. The language has evolved over time, but the effect was immediate. Many companies looked at those principles and said, we need our version of that. Principles became a market signal. Salesforce, Office of Ethical and Humane Use, brought governance close to the C-suite and close to customers, focusing on how tools would actually be used downstream. It was one of the first explicit models for customer-facing guardrails. And the field got a home. Two conferences launched in 2018, AIES, AI and Ethics Society, and the conference that would become ACM FACT, giving researchers and practitioners a place to test ideas in public. For the first time, there was an annual rhythm where practice met peer review. The spark was lit. Then came the release of the paper Gender Shades in 2018 by Dr. Joy Bulamwini and Dr. Timnit Jibru, which demonstrated intersectional accuracy gaps in commercial face analysis. The impact was concrete. Vendor audits, moratorium in some jurisdictions, and a new expectation that we evaluate subgroups, not just overall accuracy. A trio of books came out in 2018. Algorithms of Oppression by Dr. Sophia Noble, Artificial Unintelligence by Meredith Broussard, and Automating Inequality by Virginia Eubanks. And these works connected technical systems to social impact, search bias, techno-solutionism, automated poverty management, they brought community voices and policy concerns straight into engineering conversations. 
The next phase turned principles into infrastructure. IEEE's ethically aligned design released in 2019 from an initiative spearheaded by John C. Havens seeded engineering standards linking ethics to concrete requirements and workflows. OECD's AI principles also released in 2019 became the first intergovernmental baseline for trustworthy AI soon echoed by the G20. In parallel, model cards offered a deceptively simple idea, a one-stop comparable summary, documentation graduated from a compliance chore to safety equipment. That expanded again with Dr. Ruha Benjamin's Race After Technology, in 2019 and Sasha Constance Chalk's Design Justice in 2020. Fairness isn't only a metric, it's a question of power, identity, and process. And in 2020, the documentary Coded Bias took these debates global. City councils, classrooms, and boardrooms were suddenly talking about face recognition, bias, and accountability. Investigative journalism kept public attention sharp. Kashmir Hills, reporting on Clairview AI, later expanded in her book, Your Face Belongs to Us, made biometric scraping and the risk of mass facial recognition impossible to ignore. The firing of Dr. Timnit Jibru in late 2020 became a watershed moment about research integrity, power, and the governance of AI research itself. By 2021, the paper on the dangers of stochastic parrots crystallized growing concerns about large language models, environmental cost, documentation debt, and emergent risk. Books like Dr. Kate Crawford's Atlas of AI and The Tech That Comes Next by Amy Sample Ward and Afua Bruce widened our aperture to include supply chains, energy, labor, community ownership, grounding governance in material realities, not just model metrics. Governments moved. The U.S. Office of Science, Technology Policies, AI Bill of Rights, released in October 2022, outlined five rights. Safe and effective systems, algorithmic discrimination protections, data privacy, notice and explanation, and human alternatives that agencies and companies should operationalize. A month later, ChatGPT put generative AI in everyone's hands and the urgency for governance spiked worldwide. The NIST AI Risk Management Framework AI RMF 1.0 from January 2023 gave the United States a common backbone, govern, map, measure, manage. Around the same time, the Future of Life Institute released the AI pause letter, both controversial and catalytic, which shifted discourse towards capability-linked risk and independent evaluation. Narratives matter too. Dr. Joy Bulamwini's Unmasking AI in 2023 in a widely read Rolling Stone feature article highlighted the woman who raised early alarms anchoring the social story of responsible AI. On the international stage, the Bletchley Park AI Safety Summit in November 2023 inaugurated a sequence of global convenings, Seoul in 2024 and Paris in 2025, and spurred the creation of national AI safety institutes. Meanwhile, the EU's AI Act set the first horizontal AI law. Risk-based rules, outright bans for unacceptable practices, obligations for high-risk systems, and provisions for general-purpose AI. Other instruments tightened the net. The AI Soul Summit's frontier commitments mapped lab responsibilities, international standards organization, and international electro-technical commissions 42001 defined an auditable 
AI Management System, Korea's AI Basic Act, Signal Diffusion Beyond Europe, the International AI Safety Report of 2025 offered a shared analytic baseline for governments. Transparency and comparability improve. The G7 Hiroshima AI Process Reporting Framework gave model developers a structured way to disclose. The OECD AI Incident and Hazards Monitor began building the public memory of what goes wrong. The EU's GPAI Code of Practice provided a voluntary bridge for model providers ahead of enforcement. Alongside popular histories like Karen Howe's 2025 New York Times bestseller, Empire of AI documented corporate culture and strategy, essential context for governance. And the United States America's AI Action Plan released in July 2025 underscored a different policy posture, heavy on research and development and infrastructure, active debate on sandboxes and deregulatory levers. We moved from soft norms to standards, reporting frameworks, and binding law. What do these moments mean for practitioners? From values to verification, early principles were necessary, but not sufficient. Today, you'll be asked to show evidence. Model cards and system cards aren't paperwork. They prevent harm by forcing clarity on intended use, data metrics and limits, national AI institutes, the Bletchley, Seoul and Paris summits and international safety reports show that AI governance is now continuous and multinational journalism, documentaries and high profile workplace events have repeatedly opened policy windows and reset corporate risk calculus. We met the people, papers and policies that moved responsible AI from aspiration to operation, and we saw how each moment nudged the field from values to verification. History isn't just recorded. In our field, it's engineered, policy by policy, benchmark by benchmark, incident by incident. I'm Renee Cummings. Thank you for taking this journey with All Tech is Human.